Throughout Transformers history, the forces of evil have often made use of drone armies, endless legions of identical warriors who follow orders without question. And none are more famous than the bots we're looking at in this week's episode. These are the basics on the Vehicons. The Vehicons were introduced into Transformers lore by the 1999 series Beast Machines. They were an army of drones created by the Predacon criminal Megatron, mindless, mass-produced robots without living sparks or individual personalities. There were initially three Vehicon types, jet form aero drones, heavy duty tank drones, and high speed motorcycle drones. Megatron employed the Vehicons to conquer Cybertron, using them to capture other Transformers so that he could extract and imprison their sparks, then recycle their bodies to create more Vehicons. Thus, Megatron's army grew to cover the entire planet, eradicating all free will on Cybertron by replacing its populace with his unthinking, unfeeling drones. The only survivors of Megatron's Vehicon apocalypse were a team of Maximals led by Optimus Primal, whose powerful techno-organic bodies gave them the strength to fight back against the Vehicon horde. Megatron was forced to conclude that the drone's inability to think for themselves was hindering their effectiveness against Primal's team. So he took three of the sparks he had captured, those of Maximal's Silverbolt and Rhinox, and the Predacon Waspinator, and implanted them in Vehicon bodies, burying their consciousnesses beneath new personality programming to create three living Vehicon generals who could command and coordinate the drones on the battlefield. Silverbolt's spark was used to give life to the wisecracking aerodrone general Jetstorm. Rhinox became the brutish, simple-minded tank drone general Tankor, and Waspinator became the cool, brooding motorcycle general Thrust. After many battles, the Maximals were able to free Rhinox and Silverbolt's sparks, so Megatron replenished his ranks with two new generals, each with their own new drones, twin rotor helicopter Obsidian and ground assault vehicle Stryka, former Cybertronian military strategists who served Megatron without the need for new programming. But inevitably, the Maximals triumphed over these new Vehicons as well, and were able to destroy Megatron's drone factories, liberate the captured Sparks, and free Cybertron. Toys of all five generals were released, but they were based on concept art, so their resemblance to the characters' finished looks in the cartoon varied. An aerodrone toy was created by simply recolouring the Jetstorm figure, but brand new tank and motorcycle drone toys were created that better matched their cartoon designs. The toy line also included a selection of extra vehicles not featured in the show, race car Mirage, construction vehicle Scavenger, armoured combat vehicle Blast Charge, and stealth plane Spy Streak, who appeared in tie-in comic books published through official convention BotCon. In the years since the end of Beast Machines, new incarnations of the individual generals have reappeared in various new series, often reimagined in different ways. An Autobot version of Jetstorm featured in Transformers Animated in 2009, Tankor got a new toy in the Transformers Generations line in 2014, with tie-in media appearances, while Stryka has enjoyed more time in the spotlight than anyone else, showing up solo in both the animated and Cyberverse cartoons, and alongside Obsidian in comics and merchandise from both Botcon and IDW Publishing. But the concept of the Vehicons as they appeared in Beast Machines, as an endless, mindless drone army, has really only been revisited by the 2016 prose series Beast Wars Uprising. In this story, the Vehicons were the creation of alien artificial intelligence Lord Imperius Delirius, and possessed the ability to turn other Transformers into Vehicons by infecting their sparks with a virus, allowing them to spread across Cybertron like a zombie plague. 
Now, Beast Machines wasn't the only Transformers series to feature an evil army of identical mass-produced robots. Other examples include the Seacons from 1988's Super God Master Force, and the Terrorcons from 2004's Transformers Energon, and the concept would be revisited again in 2010's Transformers Prime. The legion of look-alike Decepticon troopers featured in this series were initially going to be called the Eradicons, until it was decided to pay homage to Beast Machines and name them Veacons as well. Now, the Prime Veacons weren't a mindless horde like the originals. They displayed sentient personalities and thoughts and feelings of their own. But it was also apparent that they weren't quite full Transformers either. They were referred to as drones, and were implied to have been mass-produced through cloning, which meant that the Autobots had no compunctions about mowing them down in battle. There were two major Veacon types, ground-based warriors who transformed into sports cars, and air Veacons who converted into flying forms. Multiple toys of both these designs were produced, including silver-armoured variants, higher-ranking Veacons who, in the Japanese market, were identified as Generals in a further homage to Beast Machines. The Silver Air Veacons featured in the cartoon as members of the Elite Seeker Armada led by Starscream. The cartoon also included Miners, Veacon variants whose primary function was to mine Energon, while the Transformers Prime video game introduced tank, helicopter, and truck types. The Prime cartoon often played the Veacon's disposable nature for comedy, as they were blasted, beaten up, and shoved around by both the Autobots and the other Decepticons. A popular running gag among fans was to pretend that all the various generic identical Veacons who suffered these misfortunes were actually the same Veacon a luckless, downtrodden bot that fans named Steve. This joke would be referenced in official material a few years later, in the tie-in comic book for 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise, which featured a Veacon who had begun calling himself Steve after suffering some damage to his memory banks. Transformers Prime really put the Veacon name back on the map a decade after its use in Beast Machines, to the point that today the Prime Veacons are probably more famous than the originals. They appeared all across Prime's assorted sequels, spin-offs, and tie-in merchandise, including the Robots in Disguise cartoon itself, which featured various multicolored Veacon variants among the Decepticon inmates of the prison ship Alcamor. This new fame even led to the Veacons being introduced into the live-action movie universe, in the tie-in toy line for the 2014 film Age of Extinction. Two transforming Veacon figures were released, based on the SUVs and off-road buggies used in the film by CIA anti-transformer strike team Cemetery Wind. Additionally, the Age of Extinction themed sets released in the Creo building block toy line also included numerous generic Veacon figures. But rather than Cemetery Wind's vehicles, these Veacons were based on the KSI Boss, one of a range of mass produced man made Transformer drones created in the film by human tech company KSI, which Megatron seized control of. It's enough to make you wonder if, at some point during the film's production, there might have been a plan to apply the Veacon name to all of KSI's robots. It didn't happen, but it certainly would have been a fitting label for the army of sparkless combat drones KSI created. But wherever Veacons appear, whatever form they take, they serve to represent the oppressive evil of Megatron's empire a limitless horde of identical warriors who vastly outnumber the forces of good, seeking to stamp out their free-thinking individuality and replace it with cold, faceless, unthinking conformity. And those are the basics on the Veacons. Which ones are your favourites? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel for more Transformers history and lore like this, and get early access to new videos by supporting the show on Patreon.